so uh, let, let's start with the quarter. They had a great third quarter. Uh, you know, yeah. they increased the, their they, they reaccelerated their government uh, U.S. government revenue forty percent. You know, it was ten percent uh, in, in three Q twenty three. They they they're that's their core market. Their kind of expansion market is the U.S. commercial market. That's was up fifty four percent in the quarter. You know, expanded margins, a uh, billion dollars in trillion twelve months cash flow. So you know, doubling that. So so they had a great great third quarter. Uh, the, my issue with with Palantir is that the share price has tripled this year, more than tripled. Uh, so, Sham Sankar, the Chief Technology Officer and Executive Vice President at Palantir Technologies (PLTR) Financial, recently offloaded five two eight zero 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 zero. Shares of Palantir worth $367.9 million. What, what that means is that Palantir is going to have to grow very fast for quite a while to support that kind of valuation. Um, you know, when you think about you know, a, a high-flying tech stock, we, we've seen this kind of story a lot of times before. All they have to do is miss a quarter or, or miss the market's expectation of a quarter and the stock, the stock price gets hit. Um, but putting that aside for the moment, let, let's think about what they do. You know, Palantir makes uh, software for, to solve very complex uh, data problems. Um, so that's worked great in the defense and intelligence business that, they had with the, that they've had with the government. They're now expanding into the commercial market in the US. But the lack of accelerating growth moving forward is not the only issue, as Palantir has ridden the AI wave to year-to-date gains of a huge 217%, the stock's valuation has become increasingly difficult to justify. And the question is, I mean, how big of a market is there for this, for this kind of software out there? A lot of other companies that solve a lot of business process, enterprise business process problems, you know, Microsoft, uh, Oracle, SAP, ServiceNow, and maybe more mundane kind of kind of issues. And the question is, you know, what is the really the market for this kind of com- that software that solves these complex problems? Um, and Palantir is going to have to kind of prove that the, the, there's a consistent market out there for this. Um, so again, they they have to support that that just really run up in valuation. What I found was truly shocking and has serious implications for Palantir in the coming year. It also offers some hope to investors who worry they've missed the boat on this hot AI stock. Crashing through the floor. Well, you know, they, they've been doing the government business for 20 years. So uh, the concern is really about consistency. You know, governments, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, the government contracts come and go and, 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 and you know, so, so working with the government is, is not, an always, not always a, a very consistent uh, consistent uh, practice uh, you, 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 you get uh, you win a contract sometimes you may not others it's it's a it's it's kind of a hit or miss business his analysis indicated that Palantir has already completed an entire cycle progressing through the traditional four stages of the market cycle accumulation stage one uptrend I share stock markets latest news datas and important information on my telegram channel if you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else Open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. And then how significant in your view is its commercial growth to, you know, just overall growth? We saw that revenue grew across the board 30% for all its uh, metrics. Uh, But how important is the commercial business to achieving uh, the valuation at the level that it is now and Uh, increasing its valuation? Sure, the commercial growth market is critical. Indeed, these contracts will likely fuel the growth needed to drive investor confidence, especially considering that Palantir continues to face questions regarding its valuation. The issue of Palantir's valuation has also reached Wall Street, with some analysts turning bearish on the company due to uncertainty about its future outlook. It's critical to, to, to supporting that valuation. Um, you know, again, they, they had a great quarter. They're, 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 they're doing fine. Uh, the, the question is, how big of a market is there out there? And you think about, you know, U.S. commercial was 54%. You think about, you know, their, their international markets outside the U.S., 
you know, that grew about mid single digits. Uh, maybe they just haven't tried to exploit that yet. Uh, you know, but but uh, uh, Key will be monitoring the stock for any signs of breaking into stage four, indicating a potential decline. PLTR stock key fundamentals. It's worth noting that part of Palantir's recent momentum has been tied to continued bullish sentiments, such as the company's addition to the S&P 500 index alongside key partnership deals. For instance, the technology giant signed an agreement with EdgeScale AI to launch LiveEdge, a platform that merges Palantir's Edge AI with EdgeScale AI's infrastructure technology. The two entities aim to help use AI in manufacturing and utilities through the partnership. Additionally, Palantir was awarded a $99.8 million military AI contract from the DEBCOM Army Research Laboratory. To this end, investors will be hoping for growth in the company's revenues under both the commercial and government segments. As a recap, Palantir's commercial segment recorded 33% year-over-year revenue growth in the second quarter, reaching $307 million. On the other hand, the government segment grew 23% year-over-year in Q2 to reach $371 million in revenue. In light of these developments, some analysts have offered revised targets for PLTR. For instance, Daniel Ives from Wedbush raised his target from $38 to $45, maintaining an outperform rating. Similarly, Mariana Perez of Bank of America, now Trust, NYC, BAC, significantly increased her target from $30 to $50, upgrading her recommendation to a buy rating. In conclusion, while Palantir Technologies has experienced impressive stock growth, concerns about its valuation persist. As the stock continues to navigate both bullish optimism and skepticism, its future performance will depend on how well it sustains growth. Some investors believe that S&P 500 membership gives stocks a floor, a baseline of support among index funds and other institutional ownership, which helps protect their investment. I wanted to see if that was true. I looked at the 14 stocks that joined the S&P 500 between one and two years ago, so NOVD 14 2022 to NOVD 14 2023, and tracked their prices for the year following their official induction. And if there was a flaw, it seemed to be well below their closing price on the day they officially joined the S&P 500. I'll call this their induction price. During the year following their S&P 500 induction, all 14 stocks experienced at least one drop below their induction price. The size of the drop varied widely. Outperforming fintech company Fair Isaac only dropped 1.5%, while Insulate Corp had a stomach-churning 58.5% tumble. Ultimately, 11 of the 14 stocks, or 79%, experienced at least one drop to 10% or more below their induction price in that first year. Those drops are bold-faced in the center column below. Stocks that experienced a slow but steady rise in share price immediately after their S&P 500 induction, um, like Fair Isaac and GE Healthcare, were less likely to suffer the kind of big drop that knocked their shares below their, um, like their shares below their induction price, um, but the sample size is small. On the other hand, companies that saw big uneven jumps um, like uh, uh, LISTALT um, we're more likely to see big drops as well. And that's the kind of growth we've seen from Palantir since its induction. Given Palantir's sky-high current valuation and lumpy growth trajectory, I wouldn't be surprised to see the share price drop sometime in the next year, presenting a better buying opportunity for hesitant investors. Uh, that said, I do think the company is likely to succeed long term. However, there are more attractive buyers in the market right now that don't have history working against them. On the back of the print, Jeffrey's analyst Brent Thill admits that he underestimated the momentum that PLTR was able to garner after the launch of artificial intelligence platform API Bootcamps. Phil also concedes that he did not take into account the company's ability to deliver four consecutive quarters of accelerating growth, both for the top line and RPO, remaining performance obligations, especially considering the relatively easier comps following three consecutive quarters of less than stellar readouts between Q1 and Q3 last year. 
We give credit where credit is due, Till goes on to say, and delivering 30% ye slash y revenue growth on a 17% comp and 59% y slash y RPO growth on a 21% comp is commendable. However, for those expecting the outperformance to continue, Till thinks that is unlikely. PLTR will no longer have easy comps heading into Q4 and CY25, and we believe it will be more difficult to accelerate growth from here, the analyst further said. Now at 38 times CY25e revenue, Palantir is the most expensive software name out there, trading at more than double the multiple of CrowdStrike, which holds the next highest valuation. Meanwhile, Palantir's CY25 revenue estimates have increased by 9% year-to-date, yet its NTM, next 12-month multiple, has surged by 176% in the same period. As such, the stock stands out as the only one boasting triple-digit multiple expansion, roughly four times that of the next top-performing peer, Oracle. Moreover, insider selling has picked up as shares have surged. Through 10 BF51 plans, Palantir's CEO has sold over $1.2 billion worth of stock in the past three months, equating to roughly 14% of his holdings. The heavy retail ownership, over 50% of Palantir's shares, is another potential risk. This shareholder structure is a double-edged sword in that while a bigger retail base could further fuel multiple expansion on no news slash change to fundamentals, these dynamics could also cause very quick and significant multiple compression should the stock go out of favour. Phil explained. (laughs) The upshot of all the above is that on account of an unsustainable valuation premium, Till has now downgraded his rating on PLTR from hold, i.e. neutral, to underperform, i.e. sell. Till's $28 price target factors in a 12-month drop of tilde 50%. Till track CEO Mark Lawden as the cause. Four of us on the street joined the Jefferies analyst in the bear camp, and with an additional six holds and three buys, the stock claims a hold consensus rating. Most might as well have said sell, however, given the $34.30 average price target implies the stock is overvalued by tilde 39%. This sale was planned under Rule 10BF51 trading plan that allows insiders to sell the company's stocks at certain arranged times. After the sale, Sankar still has 752786 shares of Class A common stock of the company. He seems like planning to sell more as his pre-arranged trading plan under the Rule 10 B51 gives him room to sell more of his Palantir shares, up to 7-3-0-5-0-0-0-0-0 shares. By March 6, 2026, he started his plan on August. 2 9 2, 0, 2, 4, replacing the previous plan that permitted him selling of up to 9.372 million of shares by June 30, 2025. When, when he only has seven, when he has five, two, seven, eight, six shares left, how come he can sell 7.3 million more? The, the 7.3 million shares stated in his trading plan could also consist of indirect share ownership, like stock options or any derivative interest of the executive. Um, while his direct ownership uh, only left seven, um, five, two, seven, eight, six shares, um, but he has the right to sell additional share that he controls through other means. Make more informed investment decision now by visiting Guru Focus and deep dive into Palantir performance with charts, insiders, politician positions, Guru Insights, and more. Heather A. Planashek, the Chief Accounting Officer at Palantir Technologies, Inc., recently sold a significant number of shares in the company amid the stock's impressive 344% year-to-date surge and trading near its 52-week high of $76.82. According to a Form 4 filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, Planashek sold a total of 1, 3, 8, 9, one shares of Palantir's Class A common stock on December 4, 2024. The shares were sold at prices ranging from $68.02,631 to $70.89, amounting to a total value of approximately $963,825. 
Following these transactions, Planishek holds 5, 2, 5, 8, 9, 7 shares directly. Additionally, she retains indirect ownership of 8,130 shares as a custodian for a minor child under the Uniform Transfers to Minors Act in Colorado. These transactions were conducted as part of a Rule 10 BF51 trading plan, which allows company insiders to sell a predetermined number of shares at a predetermined time to avoid any potential accusations of insider trading. For comprehensive insider trading analysis and 23 additional key insights, check out the detail called Trade Posts, a description for the 601st Airport Summit 23 additional key insights. In other recent news, Palantir Technologies Inc. and Shield AI have formed a strategic partnership to advance AI-driven autonomous flight for military operations, sharing key components of each company's proprietary software. This partnership will merge Shield AI's HiveMind autonomous system with Palantir's real-time intelligence and operational control platforms, such as Gaia, numbers 12 to 16. In response, China announced sanctions against Shield AI and 12 other US military companies. Hitting $40, investors are bullish on the equity and hope $50 will be the next target, possibly by the end of 2024. The share price of American software giant Palantir Technologies, NASDAQ PLTR, is trading at a new all-time high, but the trajectory has raised concerns regarding the equity's actual valuation. This concern comes after PLTR hit a new record price of $40 for the first time following an exemplary year of gains due to the company's venture into the artificial intelligence space. At the close of the latest trading session, Palantir was trading at $40.01, ending the day up almost 2%, while over the past month, the equity has surged more than 31%. Concerns about PLTR stock valuation. Now, stock analyst Jake Ruth issued a cautionary note about Palantir's valuation, calling it very expensive at $40 a share. According to Ruth, considerable optimism is baked into the stock price and investors should be wary, as he stated in an ex post on October 4. Ruth emphasized the importance of focusing on fundamentals, noting that market optimism may not fully reflect Palantir's future challenges. He warned that if the company fails to meet its ambitious growth targets, its stock price could sharply decline. Palantir's current valuation assumes very optimistic growth, with Ruth projecting a 10% annual growth and a 30% compound increase in operating cash flow over the next five years, potentially reaching $2.6 billion by 2029. However, he cautioned that these expectations are high, and the company's price to operating cash flow ratio of 55 suggests an unsustainable premium. Amid concerns about Palantir's valuation, uh, another analyst with the pseudonym Lin uh, stated in an ex post on October 4 that PLTR has solidified its position as a monster stock, currently in a precise stage 2 uptrend according to stage analysis, uh, a method used to identify broader trends in stock performance.